Alexa, please yodel. <laughs> Want to say hi to Kitty? Oh, hello, Kitty. <laughs> Alexa, you're my best friend. You have one minute left on your naughty corner bag, boy, Tanya. Fine, little mermaid. No! Open the bamboo mat. What is the meaning of a ball here? What's 475 times 300? It's over. Well done. Using my tablet to attend following online workout videos. I see firsthand how it's these device are helping our students. My name is Rose. I'm gonna be your nurse today. I'm okay for now. They're able to contact the patient directly, get a lot more done. This is the first time in my life I've ever been alone. It gets me a peace of mind. The security of knowing that mom is just a voice command away. That's really great. Alexa. 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 Alexa, I love you. Good morning. I love this time of year because we get to show you what we've been up to. I wish we could do it here in person, but this year things are different. But when I hear stories like Tina's, who wears echo frames while treating COVID-19 patients, or Buzz, who uses Alexa to stay connected with his mother who lives alone, I feel incredibly inspired and lucky to be part of this team. As many of you know, I consider myself to be an optimist, and I believe this year will make us all stronger. I certainly have new appreciation for day-to-day -day moments, like watching nine Star Wars movies with my family. That time together will always be precious more and more moments like these are happening at our home. Our homes have become our offices, our classrooms, movie theaters, and more. And we believe that our homes are made better by technology, technology that you don't have to learn. It works well for everybody, whenever and wherever you are. To us, this is the definition of an ambient home. And voice is certainly a big part of that. In fact, the majority of our customers are engaging with Alexa from more than one device. But we also believe the future of an ambient home is one that often requires you to speak less. That's not to say you won't speak to your home, but it's gonna understand you more. It's gonna anticipate your needs and be more contextual. This is our long-term vision, but trust me, there is a lot of work to be done to make this a reality. But today, you're gonna hear more about that progress from some of our leaders who helped invent these new products. But before we get there, we're gonna spend a few minutes on a subject that's incredibly important to us, and that's sustainability. The health of our planet is something we care deeply about. And that's why Amazon co-founded and signed the Climate Pledge, a commitment to be net zero carbon across our entire business by 2040. And the company has made great progress. We've made investments in renewable energy projects, and we're on track to run 100% renewable energy by 2025. This is five years ahead of our already aggressive schedule. To be successful, we have to invent across all areas of the business, and that includes devices and services. Until now, when we, and certainly the rest of the industry, thought about how to make our products sustainable, we focused on two phases, when we build the devices and when customers are ready to replace or dispose of that device. And programs like Amazon Recycling and Trade-In or Frustration-Free Packaging have helped a lot, but alone, they are not enough. The Echo and Fire TV devices that we're gonna show you today are our most sustainable yet. They're made of materials like 100% post-consumer recycled fabric and 100% recycled die-cast aluminum. I'm excited that these new devices will be amongst our first products to receive the Climate Pledge Friendly Badge on Amazon.com. We announced this program earlier this week and it will make finding sustainable products easier for customers. But we've challenged ourselves to think differently. We believe we can and should take responsibility for the energy usage of these devices once they're in customers' homes. We believe the consumer electronics industry has largely overlooked this. But the fact is that on average, more than half of the total carbon footprint of devices comes from when the devices are actually in use. And that's our responsibility too. Let me tell you how we're leading the way. Firstly, I'm proud that we're adding low power mode for all our new wall-powered Echo and Fire TV devices. 
which will make them even more energy efficient for our customers. In addition, we're going to be rolling out a free over-the-air update to bring low power mode to additional devices already in the hands of customers. We're also introducing a brand new energy dashboard so that customers can see the energy consumption of their Echo and Alexa compatible smart home devices. And it's all in one place. Alexa will use this information to suggest features that will help them save energy. For example, Alexa could run a routine that turns off the lights and adjust the thermostat after 10 p.m. I love seeing the team inventing more sustainable products and features. But what I'm most excited to tell you about is our new commitment to address 100% of the electricity used by every customer's Echo device. This is a big feat. And to do that, we're building new wind and solar farms to match the electricity used by Echo devices, putting the same amount of clean energy back into the grid that's being used by the devices themselves. We'll expand this to match the energy consumption of all of our devices over the next several years. Listen. Climate change isn't something one person or one company can solve alone. We hope that other consumer electronics companies will take a similar pledge alongside us to help solve this global issue. This year, our customers are spending way more time at home than ever before. And we found that they're listening to lots of music, they're creating a lot of personalized routines, and I, for one, have called my mom way more than I ever have. And our team wanted to make sure that the features and products we bring this year make every one of those moments count. We worked hard at bringing form and function together in the new lineup of Echo products, and we're, we're excited to show you. The all-new Echo has been completely redesigned. It has a spherical shape, it's covered with fabric, comes in three colors, and it fits beautifully with the decor of my home. And I've been working with this Echo for the last few months in my home office, and just like the Echo Studio, it automatically adapted to the acoustics of my room, and it just sounds awesome. We've also brought all the goodness of Echo Plus to this Echo. It has a built-in smart home hub that our customers know and love. It includes a Zigbee radio and a Bluetooth low energy support. It is also an Amazon sidewalk bridge. The sidewalk bridge extends the range of your connected sidewalk devices and helps them get reconnected should they fall off the router. In speech processing, milliseconds matter. Imagine asking Alexa to turn on the light and there's a slight delay in the light coming on. That would make customers really impatient. Our team worked really hard to shave off hundreds of milliseconds from Alexa's response time. They invented the all new AZ1 Neural Edge processor. It's a new silicon module that has been purpose-built to run machine learning algorithms on the edge. We also built new neural speech recognition models that run on AZ1. Together, they make all commands faster on the new Echo. We brought the same new design to Echo Dot and Echo Dot with Clock. Echo Dot has become the best-selling speaker ever. And it's really compact in its spherical shape. It fits in the palm of your hand, but it makes powerful sound. And Echo Dot with Clock is my personal all-time favorite. I place it next to my bedside and you know, just love waking up to the morning musical alarm. Uh, the display gradually brightens, and I love tapping it to snooze and getting a few more minutes of sleep in. Our families with kids tell us that they just love Echo Dot Kids Edition. This year, our team had a lot more fun with the spherical shape of Echo Dot. They came up with tiger and panda designs and animal-themed alarms. They're the cutest ever. The Echo Dot Kids Edition comes with kids-friendly responses, thousands of audible books, skills from brands like Disney, Nickelodeon, National Geographic, and more. We know that kids are spending a lot more time at home and their homes have become classrooms especially kids that are learning to read for the very first time. And our team wanted to do something to help. And they came up with this feature called Reading Sidekick. And Alexa can read with your child and encourage the child when the child reads well or be supportive when the child struggles to read. We also know that kids never stay in one room of the house and our customers tell us that they'd love for their kids to engage with Alexa in other parts of the house where they also have Echo devices. So today we're announcing that Alexa voice profiles for kids. 
This allows Alexa to recognize when she's interacting with a kid and switch to the kid's mode where the kid will hear kid-friendly responses, lots of kid-friendly songs, games, and more. I really hope our families with kids have fun with the new Echo Dot Kids edition. Our vision for Alexa is to make interacting with it as natural as it is to speak to a human. Today, I'm excited to show you advancements we are doing in AI that is bringing us closer to that vision. We as humans are very adaptive by nature. When we misunderstand someone, we pick the nuances on how they are responding, and we ask clarifying questions. Alexa uses similar self-learning to learn from direct and indirect customer signals. For instance, someone can say when Alexa made a mistake, Alexa, stop, or Alexa, that was wrong. Alexa uses these interaction cues of errors to figure out that there may have been a mistake in the, uh, what the action she took, and then she uses a technique called deep feedback search to automatically correct those errors. Today, we are taking this self-learning a step further. The way we do this is by having the customers the ability to directly teach Alexa, very much as we learn as humans. So in this case, Alexa will now ask questions to humans to fill her understanding gaps. Let me show an example. Alexa, set the thermostat to Rohit's vacation mode. What do you mean by Rohit's vacation mode? 60 degrees. The heat's set to 60. I will remember Rohit's vacation mode means 60 degrees. Alexa, set the light to Rohit's reading mode. What do you mean by Rohit's reading mode? 40% uh, brightness. Okay, I'll remember that Rohit's reading mode means 40% brightness. Now, just to show that she has actually learned what reading mode is, let me first turn the lights off. Alexa, turn off the light. Okay. Alexa, set the light to Rohit's reading mode. Okay. So how does this work? Alexa uses a set of deep learning based parsers to find out which part of the request she's having trouble understanding. Then she engages the customer in a clarification dialogue. And once she acquires new concepts and actions from the customer, then she learns that and maintains it, that learning for just that customer. This is an exciting step forward, not just for Alexa, but any AI service to be explicitly taught by end users. I'm super excited to bring this new capability for smart home devices first, and then we'll expand it into many different areas. When we think about making Alexa more natural, we don't think about just how she understands. We also think about how she responds. Very much like us humans, like I adapt my conversation when I'm talking to someone else. Similarly, Alexa will adapt how she responds based on the conversational context. For instance, she can start changing her tone, stressing certain words, even inserting pauses and breaths. Here's how Alexa sounds without speaking style adaptation. Very happy to help. Let's find something you'll like on Amazon Music. How about something from the 80s? Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. Does that work? And here's how she sounds with it. Very happy to help. Let's find something you'll like on Amazon Music. How about something from the 80s? Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. Does that work? And this was made possible by advances in neural text-to-speech technology. I can't wait for customers to experience this more natural and more expressive Alexa in the coming months. The ability to interact with ambient devices by just speaking the wake word Alexa and issuing your request is delightful. But that's not how we interact as human beings. Our conversations are far more free-flowing, very less structured. We often don't use each other's names. We talk over each other, and we speak simultaneously. Two years ago, we introduced the capability of follow-up mode that allows you to issue back-to-back -back requests to Alexa without using the wake word. Today, I'm excited to bring natural turn-taking that enables customers to interact with Alexa at their own pace without using the wake word on every turn, 
and even multiple people can join the conversation. I can speak to you about this for hours, but let me just show it to you because it's much simpler to understand the concept. I'm getting hungry. How do you feel about ordering pizza tonight? I could definitely go for some pizza. Awesome. Alexa, join our conversation. Okay, let's talk. I want to order a thin crust specialty pizza from Mike's Pizza. Today Mike's Pizza has the following specialty pizzas. Three Cheese Delight, Meat Lovers, Veggie Supreme, that Pepperoni one. Party. Okay, what size? Medium. Okay, so I have a medium, thin crust veggie supreme. Do you think a medium is going to be enough? I'm hungry. I'm starving. <laughs> Change that to a large pizza. Okay, so I have a large, thin crust veggie supreme for $18.75. Would you like to place the order? Yes. Okay, completing your purchase with Amazon Pay. You'll receive an email confirmation. You want to watch a movie pizza. while we wait? That sounds good. Let's see what's playing. What movie do you recommend? How about The Goldfinch starring Oakes Fegley? Who directs it? The Goldfinch is directed by John Crowley. What do you think? Is it a good movie? The Goldfinch has a rating of 6.3 on IMDb, based on 14,000 votes. Play the trailer. Playing the trailer now. As you saw, to enable this experience, we had to solve several challenges. When people are talking, are they talking to each other? Or is the conversation directed towards Alexa? And if it is directed towards Alexa, who should Alexa respond to? This required real invention in multi-sensory artificial intelligence that goes far beyond natural language understanding. Alexa uses acoustic, linguistic, and even visual cues to determine whether the request is directed towards her. Once she determines that it's indeed a request directed at her, she uses the entire conversational context to decide what's the best response or what's the best action to take. Natural turn-taking is a major step forward for enabling customers to interact with Alexa at their own pace. What I showed you today are exciting advances in the field of artificial intelligence. And they make Alexa more natural, more conversational, and more useful for our customers in their daily lives. Well, we knew from the beginning that a big part of what we wanted to do in the ambient home was interact with the world around customers which led us naturally to connected devices. We started with lights and thermostats and door locks. And of course, those are those obvious things, but it's also things like lawn mowers or Christmas trees or connected appliances in the kitchen. And now we've reached the point where over 140,000 compatible products work with Alexa. Customers have set up over 100 million of those smart home devices to interact with Alexa. They're doing things like turning on and off the lights, they're adjusting the temperature in their homes, they're checking on the front door when someone rings their smart doorbell. We love all of that, but we know we can do even more. The smart home we all really want is one where you'll talk to Alexa even less. It's already true that one in five interactions that customers have with Alexa are started by Alexa. That's because of things like routines and hunches and Alexa Guard. One of the things customers love most about Guard is the sound detectors. They love the idea that when they're away from home, Alexa is monitoring for the sound of broken glass or the sound of a smoke detector, and then can reach out to them. So we knew that there was more we could do there. And we're really glad to announce that there's a whole new set of sounds that Alexa can monitor for. The sound of a baby crying, the sound of snoring, the sound of your barking dog. So for example, you could set up a routine to turn on a light if the baby's crying in the next room and you've fallen asleep. We actually have over 2 million customers that have registered for Guard to date, and every week, tens of thousands more are registering. And you know, of course, that what we do when we uh, see that customers love something is we lean into it, we double down. So Guard Plus is a set of features that enhance all those capabilities that customers love about Guard. It expands the surface of what we do to detect. So it'll detect, for example, sounds of activity in your home like footfalls or doors opening and closing. Uh, it expands the surface of what we do to deter so, for example, someone walks up to your home, they might hear the sounds of barking dogs from within and feel a little bit intimidated about being so close to your house. Uh, and I think really importantly, we know customers are going to love this sort of hands-free emergency access. So this is 
we think a core part of what we're offering in Guard Plus. It's 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year, emergency helpline access that's hands-free. I think we can all relate to the idea that there's a lot of family uh, that we can't see right now. Even if they were nearby, we wouldn't be able to see them. I'm in that situation, so my own mother and I have been trying out the new Care Hub. We know that customers are going to love the peace of mind that they'll get from the all-new Alexa Care Hub. In the Alexa Care Hub, customers will see that they can set up a high-level relationship with a family member. So in my own example, that's me and my mom. We've connected uh, our two accounts in the Alexa Care Hub setup experience. And then I see that I have a feed, an activity feed, where I know that my mom has interacted with an Echo device or that she has interacted with a smart home uh, device, for example, in the morning. I can also set up something like a routine so that I get a notification if she hasn't interacted with a device, say, before 11 a.m. We also love the peace of mind that we get from the emergency contact capability. So she has me set up as her emergency contact. If she says, Alexa, help, it's simple. Alexa finds me in my kitchen or calls me on my phone, and I'm right there at the ready for her. Our homes are working harder for us, and we're having to work harder in our homes. Our homes are a 24-7 restaurant, they are a school, they are the place where we gather socially uh, with the few people that we can physically and certainly remotely for people that we can't gather with. Uh, my home is having to work much harder and I benefit from the fact that I've got Eero throughout the home. We're introducing an all new line of Eero products, Eero 6 and Eero Pro 6 with Wi-Fi 6 technology, a Zigbee Smart Home Hub built right in and it's just gonna make your backbone in your own home even better. I love that Eero is so easy to set up. It's a few clicks in an app, literally. You're set up with mesh Wi-Fi and you suddenly have a great backbone of mesh Wi-Fi all throughout the home to work with. I'm so proud of what the team has done this year to expand that ambient experience of the smart home for customers. If it's features like proactive hunches, being able to just go around and turn on the lights or turn down the thermostat to save you energy, or even kick off your robotic vacuum so that you come home to a clean house, or something like Guard Plus, where we're just doing more to create that peace of mind for customers about the safety of their home, or things like the Alexa Care Hub. I think that's just gonna create a whole new set of value and capabilities for customers that want to both age in place with dignity and independence and also care a lot about their parents. So I'm really excited about the ambient nature of those features and you'll continue to hear more from us. I am so excited to be here today in front of the original Ring headquarters in Santa Monica, California. Uh, it seems quiet, but in fact, 2020 has been an incredibly busy year for us here at Ring. We have already launched 19 products this year. We now have over 10 million monthly active users on the Neighbors app. And I am just super jazzed to be talking about the exciting products that we are gonna be launching the rest of this year. Privacy, security, and giving our users control over their devices and personal information are foundational to us at Ring. We were the first to make two-step verification mandatory in our industry and will also be among the first to offer end-to-end -end encryption for your videos. Launching today in Control Center, Video Encryption Controls allows you to learn more about how we are currently protecting and encrypting your videos. And later this year, you'll be able to easily turn on end-to-end -end encryption right from the Control Center. The number one most requested product from our customers is something to secure their cars. And as a customer-obsessed company, I am so proud to talk not just about one car product, but three car security products that we are gonna be launching, and they will be available beginning in early 2021. These products will redefine car security by bringing to the car the same easy to install, affordable, and integrated products that Ring customers find so delightful. I'll start with Ring Car Alarm, which is my personal favorite. Um, you know, I just, I love it for its affordability and how incredibly easy it is to use. In fact, it works on 99% of cars that are out there today. And you just plug it in and it's gonna monitor for activity like a break-in or a tow and send you a notification to the Ring app if, if it detects anything. Ring Car Cam is a first of its kind security camera for your car. When your car is parked, Ring Car Cam is always on guard 
It actively monitors for activity, and if something happens, the siren will scare off would-be intruders and you get a notification so you can watch it in real time. Ring Car Cam will also keep you and your loved ones safe while driving with emergency crash assist. If a serious crash is detected, emergency crash assist will actually automatically dispatch responders to the scene of your car, even if you can't make that call yourself. Another really cool feature of Ring Car Cam is something we're calling traffic stop. And if you get pulled over, you can just say, Alexa, I'm being pulled over. Your Ring Car Cam will automatically start recording. It, that footage will be stored in the Ring Cloud securely. And you can keep loved ones in the, in the loop by automatically sending them a notification. So car manufacturers have really been doing incredible things with built-in cameras and security systems. So we are also launching an API that can be used by all car manufacturers. Uh, it's called Ring Car Connect. It allows us to really harness the, the security systems that are already built into cars and the camera systems that are already built in and really deliver a full ring of security to customers by allowing them to watch those videos in the Ring app and to get alerts when, whenever motion is detected. So the first car that Ring Car Connect is gonna be available for is Tesla. Ring Car Connect for Tesla will allow Tesla owners to watch sentry mode and driving footage in the Ring app. So we know that when something happens, our customers wanna be able to see exactly what's going on, but it's not always feasible to have whole home coverage. So what we really wanted to do was create one device that would really give you all of that coverage that we know our customers are looking for so that when something happens, you can see exactly what it is. And that is what drove us to invent Ring Always Home Cam. The Ring Always Home Cam is a small, lightweight, autonomous camera that will automatically fly to predetermined areas of your home, giving you multiple viewpoints with just one camera. The Ring Always Home Cam can fly on preset paths that are set by the customer and you can initiate those manually through the Ring app or if motion is detected or something happens at your home, it will automatically fly and show you exactly what is going on. We really built Ring Always Home Cam with privacy top of mind. It only records when it's in motion and when it's not in motion, it actually sits in a dock where it's physically blocked from even being able to record. And in addition to that, it's built to be loud, so it's really privacy that you can hear. We at Ring are so excited about the future of security and furthering our mission of making neighborhoods safer with the new rings of security that you've seen today. If you were to go back in time five years ago, the home had largely been ignored from a technology standpoint. We had an epiphany that, that the home was going to be a very, very important place. And that was the sort of basis for coming up with voice at user interfaces and Echo Show and Echo and Fire TV. These things were brought up to a new level in your home, and it's one we call an ambient user interface. Uh, ambient computing is different. It, it's about a, a user interface that a customer doesn't have to learn. It works equally well for a group of people as it does for a single individual. And you don't really have to think about modality when, when you have it. There's no sense of what apps in the foreground or the background. It just all seamlessly works. A wall clock is a beautiful ambient user interface because it's just there when you need it, but it fades into the background when you don't. And we think we've done that with Alexa. One of the things that we've certainly learned is that customers love when Alexa can show you things. It's not about a screen that's sort of pushy in your life, but it, f it can fade into the background. And so Echo Show was all about adding a screen that at a glance you could find out things that were important to you. For me, like kitchen timers are super important. Uh, I might want to see what the weather looks like at any given time. And that screen has enhanced our idea of what an ambient user interface can become. One of the things we've heard from customers, they certainly love their Echo shows. In fact, you know, it's our fastest growing line of Echoes at this point. But the realization is that uh, customers are mobile and the Echo itself, Echo Show, is, is static. You have to glance over to it and customers are used to reacting to human beings that aren't static. They, they respond to you when you're talking to them. Today, I'm excited to launch the all new Echo Show 10. 
You know, this is completely reimagined based on feedback we've heard from customers over the past couple of years. And the team has done an incredible job packing a lot of new capabilities into a very, very small uh, device that I just love. The team came up with this idea of intelligent motion and smart motion, and how do we build a product that could actually follow you around the room as a person would when you're in a conversation. We have labs like this scattered throughout our campus, and uh, as we brought people in, they, they had very little tolerance for a noisy motor. They didn't want to hear whirring gears and those kinds of things. And so the team did a lot of work to build it. So it's, it literally, when we put it on a bench now, you can't hear the motor uh, through human ears. And it's virtually silent. They built this great brushless motor that kind of fades into the background. And when, when you see it in action, it's, it's literally magical. It's running on the AZ1 neural processor and that allows us to figure out where you are in the room. Now, we're not doing that with uh, facial recognition, we're doing that just understanding sort of the form of what a human being looks like and triangulating on that. And the cool thing about the technology is it's all running locally. And so uh, none of this goes to the cloud, it's all done locally on that neural processor and it never leaves the device. In addition to smart motion, we've added a, a really vibrant new screen to the, to the product. It's a 10 inch screen, but we've increased the brightness and the capability of that screen. And we've added a 13 megapixel camera to this, which has digital pan and zoom to not only keep you in frame, but also keep you centered in the picture. And when it's used in conjunction with the smart motion, it's, it's really great for video calling. I think the most important use case, uh, certainly in the last six months for me, has been you know, the Sunday calls I have with my dad. You know, and the fact that it can just follow me around, I could be cooking, doing tasks, and still have a conversation. It feels much more natural than any other kind of video calling user interface that I've, that I've ever used. We've added Zoom capability. Uh, we have Chime that we're adding here in addition to uh, Lexicoms and, and Skype that we've had previously. So we think we give customers a lot of selection. But in addition to that, we're adding new features that are delightful, especially in these times. Things like group calling so that I can see a whole group on the screen at the, at the same time. I think We've been most surprised by how much video customers actually watch. And you know that can be short form video, that can be uh, movies, TV shows. And so uh, Amazon Video and Hulu have been great additions over the last couple of years to, to the product, but bringing Netflix to it, is, it, it sort of takes it uh, to the next level. It, it's adding selection for customers and giving them more options about what to view. And having that show on in the background in your kitchen becomes very, very natural for all of us. So built into Echo Show 10, we've put a Zigbee hub, and we've also put a sidewalk hub in it so that uh, you know, a customer doesn't have to worry about the kinds of devices that they're putting around their house, the, the lights or the plugs. It's just gonna seamlessly work. In addition to that though, the smart motion gave us some new areas to invent. So if uh, I'm away from my kitchen, but want to point the camera towards the dog to see what it's up to, usually on my couch, uh, I can just do that from the Alexa app. Or if I'm in guard mode, the product can go into a sentry mode and every so often it can pan throughout the room and, and see if there's anything untoward going on. We've learned a lot over the past couple years about what customers love about Echo Show. And we've taken that feedback and we've rolled it into the all new Echo Show 10. And it's really reimagined from the ground up based on that feedback and we love this product. said for a long time, privacy is foundational. And I have a house full of uh, our products and it's important to me. And as we think about how to add more and more privacy capabilities, we wanna listen to ourselves and to our customers. And we certainly have done that with uh, the, this latest version of Echo Show. We have some of the classic things like we can electrically disconnect the microphones when you hit mute. We have a camera shutter to turn the camera off and block the lens. But in addition, we're adding new capabilities. You can say, Alexa, turn off motion, and the smart motion will turn off for you. Uh, we're also gonna be adding more features horizontally for all of Echo customers and Alexa customers. The first being, uh, you'd be able to say, Alexa, review my privacy settings. And we're actually gonna proactively ask customers to do that. So, you know, no two customers are the same, and 
your privacy settings might be very different than my privacy settings, and we want to give customers the ability to personalize that. We're also going to add a brand new thing you can ask Alexa that says, Alexa, delete everything I ever said. And so this just goes back in time and gets rid of all your uh, voice interactions, which we think is going to be very helpful. And we'll add an additional setting now that you can do that moving forward, too. So you can just turn that on, and anything that you say uh, moving forward, and, and also we'll go back in time, we'll just delete everything that you ever said. And as soon as you say something to Alexa, it'll get deleted automatically. People have been watching more and more TV at home through devices like Fire TV. We've, we've sold over 100 million of them live to date. Um, they're watching billions of hours of entertainment a month. And they've also been using them for new things, different things that they hadn't before. It's one of the reasons we're excited to work on video conferencing with being able to use a, a Logitech USB camera, uh, our partnership with Zoom, and of course Fire TV Cube to use your TV for communication in addition to entertainment. We think a lot about the ambient experience and, and how your TV and your entertainment plays into that. This holiday, we're launching our new Fire TV experience. And the key thing that we're doing in that is really making it more personal. So we've redesigned the experience. It starts with profiles. So now there's profiles for every member in the family, which allows it to have a more custom experience where it's your apps, recommendations that are tailored to what you might want to watch. Uh, and we've also designed it so that the, the navigation bar that's always there with you when you're navigating through the UI always has your favorite app. So it's really easy to just go to an app, see the content that you might want to watch, and get into that really quickly. We're very excited about voice. We have this new Alexa hub where you can discover more that you can do with Alexa. You could uh, find music, add to a list, um, do any of the things that you might do with Alexa, or discover things that you didn't know that you could do Alexa. You can use picture-in-picture -picture to watch something going on on maybe one of your smart cameras. And when you ask Alexa a question, it won't necessarily take over the full screen. It will, might just take over part of the screen to give you the answer that you need without taking you away from the experience that you're having on Fire TV. And it's all part of the super integrated voice experience uh, in, in delivering the best entertainment for everyone. Fire TV Stick is our most popular Fire TV product. It's um, been one of the most popular products on Amazon um, you know, ever since it launched. It, I think it has over 250,000 five-star ratings, which um, is just humbling to see how much people enjoy the product, how much they use the product, and it inspires us to figure out what else we could do to, to innovate and invent to build a better experience. So the new Fire TV Stick, it's incredible for HD streaming. It's HDR ready. It features Dolby Atmos to get the best quality sound. And it comes with our very popular Alexa voice remote. So not only can you use your voice to discover things, but you can also control the equipment around your TV to turn your TV on and off, to change the volume on your sound bar, all without having to find another remote. The new generation is 50% more powerful than the last generation Fire TV stick while using 50% less power. We're also launching a new version of our Fire TV stick called Fire TV Stick Lite, which has the same capability to be able to watch incredible HD streaming content. It comes with a simplified Alexa remote, so it's still very easy for you to use your voice to find content as well as remote uh, controls but we'll start at $29.99, giving it the most processing power of any streaming media player under $30. We know that there's also a lot of incredible stories in gaming. People love to game. It's the golden age of gaming as well. And it, it's really inspired us to think, what are the other ways that we could build a great gaming experience? We're launching this new service called Luna, our game streaming service. Our goal with Luna is to just really make it easy for anyone to decide that they want to play. There's so much great gaming out there. There are incredible stories being told by incredible teams building these deep interactive experiences. With Luna, I could play amazing games on my Fire TV, on my PC, on my phone or tablet. What it allows is that you can just get started. And so we think it expands the number of people that have easy access to just being able to play. The only reason we were able to build Luna was because we could start by building on top of the incredible capability of AWS. Uh, we've built custom game streaming on top of the powerful servers 
that AWS has developed uh, and, and frankly been able to take advantage of their expertise, their skill and knowledge about uh, networking infrastructure, about quality of service, and all of the elements that were necessary to create an incredible low latency experience to deliver high quality games from the cloud directly to your screens. So what we're doing with the Luna Plus channel is building this curated set of great games, games that are fun for everyone to play, uh, that are across categories, whether it's a sports game, whether it's an adventure game, whether it's a exploration game of some sort, there's going to be something there for everyone. The games that we that we have available in the service are super important. It's something that we really obsessed about. The all new Luna Plus game channel will include popular games like Control, Sonic Mania, like Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. We also are announcing a partnership with Ubisoft. In the first rollout of, of the Ubisoft channel, we'll have games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, Far Cry 6, um, Immortal Phoenix Rising. And, and the cool thing about the Ubisoft channel is, you know, you'll be able to play those games day and date uh, when they release. Because it's so, so easy to just fire it up on my Fire TV, uh, I've gotten into sessions and played, and the time has gone by super fast. And for me, I'm a pretty busy person. I have a, a pretty busy job, and I have a young son. So Luna has actually been pretty amazing for me to kind of jump back into something that, um, that I really do enjoy doing. The controller is an excellent game controller. It has all of the buttons and sticks and feel that you would want in playing a game. But we went further and we really thought about how to create a great gaming experience for cloud streaming. And so it features this technology called Cloud Direct, which means that the, the gamepad connects directly to the cloud versus to the local device. And by doing that, we can do a couple of things. The first thing is uh, it removes latency. Pulling every millisecond out is really important to make sure that the games feel fluid and fast and responsive to you. But then also it makes it really easy for you to move between devices. You don't have to pair. You don't have to go to this device and figure out how do I pair my controller with my TV or with my PC or anything like that and unpair it from one and move to another. It's my controller connected to my game. And so as I move between our client experiences on these devices, it just effortlessly works. And that simplicity was one of the really important things for us as we thought about building the controller. We have been running a bunch of tests on the controller, and the one that I think is really interesting to call out is when you're playing Luna on Fire TV Stick, we were able to, to remove 20 milliseconds of latency. Because of that round trip action is no longer happening, it's actually faster playing Luna on Fire TV Stick than connecting to a Bluetooth controller. 20 milliseconds is a lot. Like that's the difference between um, you know, winning or losing in a game. It's the type of thing that you can actually feel. From the very beginning of talking about Luna internally, we were of course started by talking about Twitch and how to build a deep and integrated experience. And this idea that uh, I could discover a game with my favorite Twitch streamer and instantly be able to drop in and play that game is something that we think uh, is really incredible. And similarly, inside of the, the Luna experience, those streams that are live now with who's streaming them and be able to not just play, but maybe I want to watch right now and sort of see what's going on with my favorite streamers. So we see it as a way to pull that community um, and make it an even deeper and more engaged part of the experience. Oh man, I'm really excited. Okay. I, yeah, I got lots of questions. All right. I hate just being like, all right, I got the game. Now I have to wait for it to download. It's update, update, update. Download the patch, download everything. I like it. It's loading incredibly quickly. It's very surprising. It's responding really well to everything I'm putting into it. Wow, that's awesome. This is an Amazon product, so that means you're building it on AWS. That's brilliant. You're giving anybody the chance to play a really quality game without having to spend the dollars on, on the equipment. I have two computers under my desk, two massive towers, and just the idea of being able to get rid of all of that is incredible. If I could have it right in my pocket or on a fire stick ready to go. So I could literally plug this into any TV anywhere I go. Now it's just streamlined so I don't even have to think about it. Okay, so you just hook it up. Oh, what? And there it is. <laughs> 
And it looks just as good as it did on the TV. Let's see what other games you have on here. Assassin's Creed Bahala. Yep, Sonic. I'm sorry. Twitch streams of this game? Shoot, this is so cool. It's it's integrated with Twitch, so oh man, that is just genius. You know, with all this cloud-based stuff, this is what should be happening. So I can take this home with me, right? <laughs>But we're going to get them out to you and all of our customers as quickly as we possibly can. Thank you so much for your time. We can't wait to see what you all think.